They said we knew a lot more by Monday. There are still some pieces of the puzzle coming together, but certainly have a much better representation of what is going to happen with likely Hurricane Helene coming up over the next few days. Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're going to jump into it. A shorter update today. Tune in tonight on this channel, 8 o'clock live. Come with questions. We're going to break it down as we see it in real time. Okay, so here is the deal as we jump in. And if you want to stay updated and get those notifications, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button for me. So this blob here that's blasting Jamaica had some comments from some friends in Jamaica that they're getting some very, very heavy rain, some flash flooding going on, all because of the thunderstorms associated with what is potential tropical cyclone nine, not yet a tropical cyclone in the Atlantic Basin. We have depression, storms, and hurricanes, but it has the potential and likelihood to be one. The Hurricane Center just wanted to get the cone out, which I'll show you in just one second, because this is going to be a rapidly intensifying situation, and it's going to make landfall very, very quickly. So not two things that you want to see here. We're going to get into that in just one second. But this is now organizing potential tropical cyclone nine. This is expected to become a tropical storm and then a potentially very strong hurricane. Uh, that is eventually going to be drifting, lifting up to the north, uh, somewhere in between the Yucatan Peninsula and western Cuba. A couple of things here in the short term that we're going to be watching. I'm going to show you the steering currents coming up in just one second. There's also John over here, which continues to rapidly intensify. This is going to head to the east and make landfall in parts of Mexico as well. The outflow of John can have some implications on future Helene in the Western Caribbean because it can help to keep it weaker in the short term with inducing some wind shear. But what it's been doing all day today is its outflow has been pushing and inducing that westerly shear on the mid-level circulation of PTC-9, helping to push all of its thunderstorms to the east, again, closer to Jamaica. The implications it could have in the short term, not only by inducing some shear to maybe keep it weaker in the short term, but it could help its low-level center develop underneath those thunderstorms, making it develop further east than what guidance currently has. So that could have implications for where it makes landfall, maybe east of what guidance has as well. It's going to be critically important to get the hurricane hunters up in there as we speak they are up in there, and we should, by 0Z tonight, by 8 o'clock Eastern, have some the first model runs with good Hurricane Hunter data in them. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that first run of uh, models with the Hurricane Hunters in them. So here we go, expected to become a hurricane as we get towards Wednesday morning. There is 8 o'clock in the morning. This is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. And then taking this further out, this is likely, because of the steering currents, coming to Florida. Likely going to have a Florida landfall here. Still trying to determine where exactly that is, anywhere from the Big Bend to around the Tampa, Sarasota, St. Pete area. I'm going to show you why. If you are watching this video, though, from Florida, if you're watching, say, from... Sarasota, Bradenton to St. Pete, Tampa, all through the Big Bend and into the Panhandle. I know this might sound drastic, but look at the time frame here. That's Thursday morning that we could be dealing with a landfalling hurricane if it hugs the eastern side of the forecast cone. Remember, the forecast cone only deals with where the center is going to be. This is likely also going to be a very large hurricane. So even if we're talking about this thing hugging the western side, impacts are coming to the Florida Peninsula. Uh, the thing that we don't have a lot of time with, though, is to react if this does start hugging the eastern side. I'm going to talk about my thoughts on that in just one second, on if it can hug the eastern side. But nonetheless, uh, if you live around the Tampa area, we're going to have a very strong southerly push of wind coming up into Tampa Bay. So if you're susceptible to surge in through Tampa Bay, we're going to have that southerly wind pushing up. We're, of course, going to dissect this further as we get closer to the event. But again, if you're watching really even anywhere from Cape Coral, I know you guys are uneasy in Cape Coral from Ian and Charlie and Fort Myers as well. Um, I don't think at this time it's going to make a hard right hook, and I'll show you why in just one second. But things still need to come into fruition in terms of the steering. Uh, also to note, 
if you're watching Far Inland in Montgomery or Macon, Augusta, this hurricane is going to come racing in. And we could have hurricane force winds, maybe even up to Atlanta. The deal with this is, is if that if some of the hurricane models are correct, uh, those are a very very dire picture. And again, you know me, I don't like to use, I don't like to hype things up. I don't hype things up. Um, if you have looked at some of those hurricane models, it's not a good picture. They have it much, much stronger than the official forecast. We'll also talk about why typically though, the hurricane center does come out conservative and then they react as we get more things to develop. There's no doubt that's what they did here. Uh, so don't bash them for coming out, um, conservative. They are forecasting a, again, a strong hurricane, almost a major hurricane, uh, to come anywhere from Tampa to the panhandle of Florida, that is going to tighten up as well. I want to show you the latest modeling. This is from the 18Z run now. Um, so we have the two o'clock data coming in and there's been, looks like a shift to the east. Now, we talked about this last week that the European was likely out to lunch. It was. It caved significantly to the GFS. So the GFS has won again this year. Talked about this with Barrow and how terrible it was. Everybody thinks Euro is king. It sometimes is, but the GFS has cleaned its clocks this hurricane season. And so far, the GFS is right. It's also the furthest to the east um, at this point, making it closer to the nature coast. Um, the hurricane center track is much further to the east than the model consensus. Part of that is because they could be using human forecasting to account for what John is doing in the Pacific and the models initializing too far west. The other part of it is taking into account this upper level trough. This is what is going to be steering the storm. So here we go, two o'clock on Monday. Our storm is developing right about here, right about the Cayman Islands, at least as forecast by the model here. And the mid-level center is blasting Jamaica right now with some super, super heavy rain. Um, taking this further out into the future here, this big ball, that, and again, that just goes to show the potential size of this storm. Then by Wednesday morning, there's 10 o'clock, is going to be around Cancun. The GFS has it closer to Cancun. We'll see how far to the west or east it is in the Yucatan Channel by Wednesday at 10. This is what is going to be doing the main steering. We have this upper high in orange here, east of Florida. That is going to help to guide it up. How far west or east it pushes, still too early to determine. We'll see if they get some some synoptic reconnaissance out there to measure the, how strong that area of high pressure is. This is the main feature. See this gray area and those arrows going around the base of this trough from about Dallas to Houston to Mobile into Omaha. That is going to be our upper trough that is lifting our storm from south to north. So that's initially what grabs it out of the Caribbean and then lifts it toward the at least the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Watch what happens, and this is what's going to add some extra uncertainty. This is the GFS, by the way. Our upper low right here in gray, you see the land color start to come back. It gets cut off from the normal flow. So it pulls the thing and then yanks it to the north. If, and this is where I mentioned I would talk about later on in the, in the, in the stream here, if it wants to make a sharp curve to the east, like a Charlie, like an Ian, we would be looking for this to stay attached to the main flow that's it, that's through Montreal into Buffalo because then it's going to have something more progressive and then yank it to the east. If it if it appeared then that and that's why really everybody from about Fort Myers to Tampa need to be watching this closely even though a lot of the models show a strike in the Panhandle or Big Bend. The reason being is if we start to get upper air data suggesting that that trough remains connected. It's going to have a higher probability to start to deviate even more from what the models show at 18Z. And again, good hurricane hunter data is going to come in. One of the reasons why, and again, if it stays strong, if it can strengthen fast and become get an inner core and fend off some of that westerly shear from John and the Pacific, we've got some big time problems. 
And that is because the ocean heat content, we've advertised this since before the hurricane season being at record levels. And it's also going to go through something known as the loop current. So you see this big red area, it's kind of shaded a little bit because that's the cone. I wanted to overlay the official forecast on the cone or on the ocean heat content. This thing here that kind of loops up if you follow my mouse, that is the loop current. Storms are notorious for finding the loop current and rapidly intensifying. Now, maybe it will go to the west side of that. And if it does, that will be great because notice the ocean heat content isn't as high. So a couple of things to watch. If it hugs the central and eastern part of the cone, this thing is going to have the potential to get strong, pending that it has a core before it goes through the Yucatan Channel. So mark that down in the notes. If this, if this thing starts to develop a core prior to going through the Yucatan Channel, which is between the Yucatan, Cancun, and the western tip of Cuba, this thing could verify what some of the hurricane models are putting out, unfortunately. Um, if it stays on the western side, it might be impacted more by the cheer from John, and it can go over the lower ocean heat content and then work its way up. And that's likely why the Hurricane Center did come out a little conservative. But if you're watching this video on Monday afternoon, uh, September 23rd, past 3 o'clock, um, you're only going to have 48 to 72 hours to prepare for a strong hurricane if you're in the Tampa, St. Pete, Bradenton, Venice area. So that is why even though if you're not in the cone and the models look like they're not going to be threatening, we're still going to have a ton of storm surge on the Gulf Coast of Florida from Cape Coral North. Uh, and you should probably just start going over your hurricane plans. It would not be a bad idea to, if you need medications, to just order them. Call your pharmacy, get all that stuff. Now's the time you want to start doing that and maybe picking up some open things in your yard. In the case, it would shift and come east. If you are watching really from Cedar Key to Tallahassee to Port St. Joe, Panama City, uh, you need to make sure that your hurricane plan is in full swing as by Thursday afternoon, we could be looking at a major hurricane strike. Um and uh, again, that is on the on the lower end of guidance, to be quite honest. We're going to go over a lot of those hurricane models tonight. Uh, if you found this information informative, if, and if you want to be part of the live stream, and again, it's interactive, we take your questions and we go through uh, all of the progressions and we go real nitty gritty and we go for about 30 minutes or so. Um, it's obviously going to be uh, a long one tonight and it's going to be an in-depth one tonight, but I'm going to answer your questions, concerns, all of the above. Uh, to find that it's 8 p.m. Eastern, again, if you hit that subscribe button, we're going to be able to have that. Uh, you're going to be able to get that notification that we are live as well. So if you found this content helpful, um, and I hope you did, please give it a thumbs up and please hit that subscribe button. And we will catch you at 8 o'clock and throughout the rest of the week if you want to stay updated on this storm in uh, particular and a bunch of extra ones to come. We'll see you tonight at 8, guys. Thanks so much. Be safe.